There has been quite a few developments regarding the RWR on the Hornets of late, including a lot of discussion and disagreement in the community. It appears that the ALR67 RWR that we see in the Hornet has been both highest threat in and highest threat out at some point during its service. We've had information from Heatblow's team showing a diagram that displays the RWR as having critical threats on the outer edges. As you've probably seen in the FSX VRS Superbug wiki as well, the RWR also shows the critical threats outside, and in game we've got the RWR functioning as such with threats jumping outwards with missile warnings appearing on the outermost band. However, a lot of people, including those who claim to be pilots and have operated the ALR 67, have been stating that it's incorrect and it should follow the more traditional higher threat goes inwards toward the centre of the display. And the official DCS FA-18C Hornet manual shows threats getting more dangerous the closer they are to the centre of the display. It's been stated by Vincent Jello Aiello, a retired US Navy fighter pilot from the Fighter Pilot podcast, said that it used to be one and then it changed to the other. To be honest, I don't remember where it ended last. So let's go with the outer ring because you get better azimuth of arrival accuracy that way. So why would it be inverted as we perceive it? from the perspective of a DCS virtual pilot. Well, I've dug up some old training videos for the AN APR 25 for the F4 Phantom from 1967. I apologize for the audio quality, but this may well be of interest to you. Let's set up a situation in which an F4 encounters a multiple threat signal environment. See if you can use the controls on the panel here to clear this scope enough to find the azimuth of the fan song signal which at present is lost in this mass of scope. My billboard and scope indicate that I'm getting several E-band threats as well as India band signals. If I'm supposed to find the azimuth of the fan song among this group of threats, I believe that I would first get rid of the AAA signal. That leaves me these two E-band strobes, which I can assume are fan songs. Correct. That gives me a stand site at 2 o'clock and one at 4 o'clock. Wait a minute. What happened? You'll recall that if you're in close to a fan song, that will override your AAA defeat circuit and light up your AAA threat light. One of those fan songs has gone to high TRF, and he's turned on his guidance in. See that strobe open? It tells me which SAM site is getting ready to launch a missile. That red warning indicates the launch process is underway, or that a SAM may already be in the air. All I can say, sir, is that if this were to happen in real life, I certainly hope that I started all of the proper defensive tactics long before this. As you saw in this demonstration, the higher a threat or signal strength, the further the line creeped towards the outward edges of the display. I believe this would be part of why the symbology would show higher threats on the outside on a more modern digital radar warning receiver. In addition to this, you would have an easier time accurately discerning direction or heading to a fret with the icon on the outside rather than on the inside of the display. So what does this all mean for the implementation of the RWR in DCS? Matt Wagner got in touch and has stated, The band logic has changed over the years based on software version, given that most of the public information is in regards to the critical band being the inner band, we will probably move to this at a later point. As Matt Wagner stated, the critical band is going to be subject to possible change in the future. That may result in the DCS simulation of the Hornet having the ALR-67 switch to reflect what's written in the current manual, with the greatest threats moving inwards on the display. As both sets of logic have been used in the RWR, we cannot be certain which version they will go for in the simulation ultimately. I'm certain they want to bring us the most accurate simulation possible, even if that means doing something perceived by the people as wrong. As it stands right now, the manual states threats are greater in the centre, but the simulation shows threats being greater on the outside. Now I'm sure many of you can see the issue here. We've got the manual telling us information that whilst apparently correct, does not match our simulation, making it unhelpful as a learning tool. Unfortunately the manual for now is incorrect. We really could do with a disclaimer to clarify the situation, stating that the in-game simulation varies from the manual and why. 
so our RWR, as of recording, functions to show the greatest threats on the outside bands of the display, with non-lethal in the centre, lethal on the outer band and critical on the outermost edge of the outer band. Bear in mind that in the future this could easily change as we see the Hornet develop further. Hopefully this goes a long way to helping clear up what's been going on with the radar warning receiver. We will have to wait and see what happens with future developments.